Join nearly 1,400 entrepreneurs and students at the 2013 Collegiate Entrepreneurs Organization National Conference in Chicago, October 31st through November 2nd. Visit CEO.org for more information. That's C-E-O.org. This is Michael Lukies from the Collegiate Entrepreneurs Organization, here with John Pytel, co-founder of Conferences IO. John, thanks a lot for joining me. Sure, no problem. Happy happy to be here. Appreciate uh, you reaching out today. Yeah, tell us a little bit about Conferences IO. Sure. So, the big picture for Conferences IO is that it's a product that makes it very easy for an audience to interact with a presenter in real time. So our application is web-based, which allows attendees or the audience to use any sort of Internet-connected device, so smartphones, tablets, laptops. And our product allows them to interact with the presenter in a couple of different ways. So Conferences I.O. allows attendees to respond to polling questions. They can submit questions themselves for the Q&A session, and they can also provide evaluation feedback. So the, the overall concept and kind of the goals and outcomes for the product are, are really to increase attendee engagement and participation, make things more interactive, make people more engaged with the content. People can only listen for so long before they start to you know, check out and, and get bored. So by providing these, these different interactive features, the attendees get a lot more out of the, the presentation than they would have otherwise. So, yeah, I mean, audience want a lot more engagement, but are some of the – do you feel like there's there needs to be a big shift on the part of the the conferences and the concerts to be able to accept this, to be able to you know institute changes or real fee- feedback at real time? Is there a big shift that needs to be made there? There is. The um, there's been so our kind of technical category that we fall into is is called an audience response system. Audience response systems have been around for for a while now, but the traditional response systems and the technology that most events are used to are hardware-based systems. So uh, we refer to them as as clickers. Uh, They're also used a lot in in, uh, universities and colleges. But uh, essentially, the response system works where you set up a receiver in the room and then you rent the set of devices from the response system company and you pass a device out to each attendee. So, you know, you actually have these physical separate devices that have a few buttons on them and you pass those out to each of the attendees and their real purpose is traditionally designed for, uh, to accomplish polling which is one of the things we do. So that technology has been in place for a while now, and and a lot of people in the conference of events and meetings industry are are, familiar with those uh, those systems, and they use them. So there isn't necessarily so much of a shift towards getting used to this real-time interaction because they've been doing that with these devices for a while. But there certainly is – a a shift or kind of a you know, necessary um, adjustment for using mobile devices, right? And, and that's kind of that's kind of the purpose of why we built conferences. I always was that there's a lot of hassles involved with those hardware-based systems, and with the advent of mobile technology and how quickly adoption is, is growing. It's just kind of crazy to have to you know, require attendees to use this separate device that is you know, far limited in terms of you know, functionality than their, their phone is. So we think there's a you know, huge opportunity 
and you know, eventually those hardware-based systems are, are going to be a thing of the past. Um, we're probably you know a little bit early. There, there's certainly still some some getting used to, uh, just in terms of these you know the different uh, organizations um, getting used to allowing the attendees to to use their devices and and you know working through the the internet and not just this you know separate hardware system. So. Um, it hasn't been a huge barrier for us. Like, you know, we, we've had success, and, and people love the product. Uh, it makes things a lot easier than using those those hardware-based systems. But we're we're probably you know a little bit early. We're we're on the forefront of it, um, so we're we're kind of we're kind of you know, paving the path a bit for this new concept of of audience response systems. So the old version of the technology, I kind of picture as uh, when I was a kid watching America's Funniest Home Videos and the audience would vote for their favorite video or on who wants to be a millionaire who they, when they pull the audience. Is that kind of, yeah. you know, the basic idea that you guys have, you know, blown out of the water and brought up to date? Yeah, yeah, it's, it's really, it's really uh, similar. The, the only difference is that for those, those TV shows, you know, on the sets, um, and you'll see them on a lot of different TV shows. I think even a lot of like um, you know, news shows will, will do them sometimes, or like morning shows. But uh, the, the big difference is that those like studios where they shoot those those shows will already have the you know device sitting there, right? Or, or a lot of times I know that they're even like connected to like the chairs, like the the who wants to be a millionaire? I think they're like literally built into the chairs. Um, so. For these conferences, you know, things that aren't big production TV shows, um, you know, that's not the case. You're coming into a new venue, and you have to now figure out how to uh, not only pass out all these devices to everyone, but you have to track who has which one in case someone, you know, runs off with one. Uh, you have to collect them all at the end, and then you have to ship them, you know, overnight back to the company. So, you know, not only is the technology outdated it's just it's it, it's a pretty big hassle um and they're also very expensive so so the, to answer your question yeah yeah they're, they are very similar but it, it's even harder to to uh integrate them and, and use them in a you know standard you know event or, or conference uh versus those you know big big production tv shows So what inspired the creation of Conferences I.O.? So the the initial idea actually came from my co-founder, uh, Dave Mulder, who was sitting in a large college lecture hall. And uh, we, we both went to Michigan State University. Uh, so every you know almost every class we had was like a huge 300-person lecture hall. Um, and no one would ever ask questions, right? Everyone always had questions that they wanted to ask, but no one ever wanted to raise their hand and speak in front of 300 other kids. You, know, you didn't want to look dumb. You didn't want to you know, admit you didn't know something. Uh, so those questions never got asked. So actually the initial idea was just a way for students to be able to ask questions in real time during class uh, from their laptop or, or smartphone uh, and then vote on the questions that they wanted addressed so that the, the instructor would have that insight into you know, what, are, what are the things that, that the students are confused about, you know, what are the questions that we want answered. Um, from there, it kind of transitioned into a more robust product where we also integrated polling and, and you know, some of the other features. Um, we, we used those clickers that I was talking about earlier in school. Uh, Michigan State uses them in a lot of classes. So we were used to this you know, functionality, and uh, eventually it got to the point where we you know, dis discovered that this was also a great fit in this you know, event and meeting setting. And we were just kind of overwhelmed with demand from that, that industry uh, to the point where you know, it's crazy to try to make this work solely for education. And in your background, have you always been entrepreneurial? You know, I, I, I have. I one of the examples, you know, whenever I ask this question, one of the examples I give is that I would always set up a 
uh, like a basketball sales stand. Well, we would have like garage sales in our neighborhood. And, you know, one time a year we would have a garage sale and I would, you know, be acquiring all these different trading cards, you know, throughout the year. Uh, and then I would sell them. That would be like my big payday. Um, so I, I was always doing little things like that, you know, selling like pens in school, doing all these different things. Um, I always knew though that like this is what I wanted to do. Uh, from as long as I can remember, I always said, you know, I want to start my own company. Um, I, I remember really early on, I, w- I always wanted to uh, start my own ice cream store. I was like, as a kid, I was really into ice cream, so I remember that was like a dream of mine for a while. I wanted to start my own ice cream store. Um, so I'd always, I had always had this like desire and known this is kind of what I wanted to do. Um, so it, you know, it, it didn't take long after I graduated from school um, to to you know give it a shot. Uh, I, I only lasted six months in like the the corporate world, um, and it was just I I, I couldn't do it. I, mean, I was I was a bad employee. Uh, I I just couldn't take you know not working. Uh, I'm building my you know some, something of my own. So it's always been kind of driving me. I've always known what I would do and. And I'm lucky enough to, to have it work out so far. So going off of your mention of being in the corporate world, do you feel that you gained anything from that experience that helped you? Or was it just, you know, limiting and something you wanted to break through so you could start your own company? No, it, it was it was definitely beneficial. Um, I'm really glad I was able to work at a, you know, a few different jobs. Um during school, I actually worked for uh, Aflac, the insurance company, and so that gave me my really my you know my real first taste of of sales. Um, and it was also uh, you know a bit entrepreneurial. Like the, those the, the the sales guys for Aflac uh, essentially own you know operate their own company. Uh, they have their own you know customers. They do their own marketing. Um, so so I got to learn a little bit you know about kind of like the small business aspect. Uh, but really, that was my first experience with like true sales, uh, and I learned a ton from it. I had a, I had a great mentor; uh, his name was, was Pat Fuller, uh, who taught me a ton. Um, after after I graduated, I worked for the Nielsen Company for a short period of time, and that was it, as much as I I disliked you know, working on the corporate side. Uh, I definitely learned a lot, and in particular, it kind of polished up my business acumen, I guess. It just, just, I, I worked with a lot of uh, customers or, or clients you know, on different projects. So uh, I learned you know, the proper way to uh, send emails and uh, you know, how, to, how to pose, how to you know, communicate appropriately um, in emails, how, how to you know, say no to clients, I, really how to work with uh, work with clients successfully. So I, I learned a lot of those um, just kind of, you know, small, intricate things that you don't learn in like, the classroom, uh, which which definitely helped me moving forward. On behalf of the Cleveland Entrepreneurs Organization, I want to thank you for agreeing to speak at the upcoming 2013 CEO National Conference in Chicago. Uh, what will you be speaking about? So, I'm going to be speaking about this concept of, of the lean startup method. Um, I, the, the title of my presentation, I, I think, was um, how do you start your company for the first time straight out of school, something to that degree, uh, which is essentially w- what I did. And um, I attribute a lot of the success that I've had so far to learning about this this concept called the Lean Startup Method. So, in your opinion, how has the Lean Startup Method changed the landscape for pe- for people wanting to start a company? So, what the Lean Startup Method is all about is going against the grain of writing a huge business plan with a bunch of assumptions and raising a bunch of money to try to fulfill this plan, essentially. Uh, the, the, kind of, the concept behind it is that 
so many startups fail, right? Like 95% of startups fail. Um, and the, the argument of the lean startup is that they fail because they build these business plans and make all these assumptions, you know, financially and just, you know, operational assumptions that they aren't able to test until it's too late, right? So, uh, you know, you have this plan that looks great on paper, but until you actually get out there and, and you know, put it into operation, you don't know if any of those are going to be true. And you build this whole, you know, multi-million dollar company based off of these these kind of core assumptions. And, and one, of, one of those is wrong, uh, you know, it's kind of like a house of cards, right? You know, one of the one of the pillars turns out to be wrong and it breaks. The whole thing collapses. Um, so the, the the lean startup is all about you know, figuring out those kind of key assumptions and testing them and validating them before you you know you you get too far ahead of yourself. Uh, so it was insanely important that that I happened to discover this as I was you know, getting ready to quit my job because it's it, it just it, it's, I always call it it's the closest thing to a blueprint for you know, how to start a company and uh, with you know if I didn't stumble on this this idea of a lean startup uh, I don't think I think I would have probably failed you know the first time around um, I just I, I looking back to where I am today and where I started I was you know, really clueless about uh, a lot of really important things. Um, so this gave me just a, a, a great kind of starting place to um, figure out if this thing was going to actually work before I uh, you know, bet my whole life on it. Yeah, we're, we're going to be able to have uh, Trevor Owens from Lean Startup Machine at the conference as well. So, yeah, there's definitely – uh, been a huge change. A lot of people have benefited from lean startup methods. Yeah, it's 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 growing and growing in popularity because um, okay, it works. Uh, and there are there are a ton of you know huge success stories that have come out of it. So um, I'm 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 glad that I found it and I, I want to you know spread the word about it as much as I can. And last question here: What's your best piece of advice for a young entrepreneur? Hmm. So, my best piece of advice would be if you know that you want to start your own company, you want to give entrepreneurship a shot, if you, if, if you try to do it early on, if it does fail, your risk, you know, the younger you are, the less risk you have. So, like, for example, you know, when, when I quit my uh, my job, uh, I was, let's say, uh, 20, 22 or 23, uh, still, you know, able to be on my parents' insurance. I I didn't have my own, like, apartment yet. I had very little costs. Um, so I was able to, you know, save up a little bit of money to, to support myself when I, you know, through the before I was able to make more money with my own company, um, but my my risk was you know not that high. I didn't have a family to su- to support. I didn't have a ton of bills to pay, and so if if it did end up failing, um, it was okay. I, you know, I, I could find another job. Um, I would probably learn a lot along the way and would be at a better place to try it again or, or you know, move to another position. Um, so. If you really want to try something, um, don't just jump into it blind, but just remember that, you know, the longer you wait, the riskier it's, it's going to get for you. Once again, this has been Michael Lukey with John Pytel of Conferences.io. John, thanks again. and look forward to hearing you speak at the 2013 CEO National Conference. Sure. No, no problem. Thanks for having me, and I'm, I'm looking forward to the conference.